React India. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this talk is basically about the basics of the relay that and the understanding that I got from my experience while working with the relay recently. So to start with the uh, uh, introduction, I'll just uh, give a quick disclaimer that uh, all of the examples that I've used for this presentations are basically from the React Relay official documentation. So you're going to see the code and uh, the images from the Relay, uh, React Relay documentation itself. Uh, I've cop I've copy pasted them over here just for just to keep it for the simplicity. I've just uh, reused those examples for explanation. Okay, so I just wanted to quickly check like uh, do we have the GraphQL users here? Uh, anyone who uses GraphQL for their production applications and uh, are building their applications using the GraphQL, using any one of the GraphQL clients as well? Okay. Uh, so I, I assume that most of us are already aware of the GraphQL and GraphQL client. So, uh, let's move on to the next slide where uh, gartner uh, did a survey on uh, uh, graphql usages and they figured out that by 2025 more than 50 percent of the enterprise are going to get used uh, will be using the graphql in the productions which is like uh, in uh, 2021 they did a survey and they figured out that only 10 percent of the enterprise were using uh, the graphql but if you see now it it is going to be more than 50 percent of the enterprises which will be using the graphql in the productions so that defines uh, uh, the usage of the graphql currently in the production apps and that really uh, takes us to the next level that why we should now consider graphql as one of uh, one of uh, one of one of the tech stack to be used in the fr uh, front end application development okay so before talking about the graphql let's talk about the loading state of the application okay so i have just given a simple example of the linkedin wherein for example you're building a linkedin like application and you have multiple components which has their own loading state uh, let's consider uh, this left panel then you have the center panel and the right panel and each of them are making uh, the network calls to get their data and render on the on on the ui but imagine like would it be a good experience for your user if you have a multiple loading state for example your left hand panels loads the data then shows the content then after that you're making a request to get some data for your middle panel and after that is done then you query the data for your third panel which is the last one right so this is a common scenario wherein you might see multiple application viewing in in current world also you'll see this kind of the application wherein you will have multiple loading state but imagine like uh, if it could have been a better user experience if you would have just single loading state and that single after that loading state your complete application will be full uh, full fully ready to be used for your users so this current example that you are uh, seeing on my screen is an example of a single loading state wherein uh, whenever you try to load the LinkedIn application, it will immediately send a request to the server to get the complete data for whatever data is required to make this page work. So this includes your left panel, the center panel, as well as the right panel, right? But this always comes at a cost, right? So if you're trying to make a single call to get all the data, then imagine that that how big call that you'll be making to your server, right? Uh, you will have a complex data request uh, a need for your left panel as well as for center and for the right panel so you do not actually want it to complicate your component so in react we use a strategy called container and the presentational component right so imagine that your container component is making a big query and getting all the data in in the uh, in the container component itself right so that makes it pretty complex uh, to manage the application state in a single component but like uh, but that also comes with another benefit of like uh, you'll uh, since you're loading the uh, data at one place only you will have to manage the data at one place only and there'll be only single loading state right so to combine the benefits of both the approaches having a single loading state as well as uh, making sure that each of the component has their data requirement de uh, declared in the component itself there comes 
the relay magic so there we are basically going to learn about how relay can help us to build an, a complex application where you have a data requirement for your all sub components and uh, you just are making a single page query to get all those data but still maintaining uh, the abstractions from each uh, each of these components that you created for your application okay so before graphql we used to have a rest and we still have some applications running in the production which uses the rest so just to give a quick overview of how rest versus graphql works so for example if you have a, a rest endpoint called slash person which works with some query parameter and uh, let's consider pers person id so if i pass the person id i get a response uh, in the json format which has some fields so imagine that now your requirement changes and you basically do not need some of the fields from this response right so the person uh, or the developer who has built this uh, endpoint for your application might need to update their uh, endpoint to support your use case right you cannot selectively choose the data that are required for your front end application so it, it it is basically like sending you all the data which is there uh, uh, which that backend uh, endpoint has declared right you you have no choice whether to neglect some of the fields from this response but if we look at the graphql query request you see that you are making a query for a person with the id and you are selectively choosing the field so the benefit of making a graphql query is a straightforward benefit is you you see that you are you have a choice to selectively choose the fields from your uh, uh, from your response so here i'm just choosing a name and occupation and in the response I, you see that json object whatever is being re returned from my backend just consists of uh, the fields that i have requested i am not being overloaded by, by uh, other fields which are not at all being used on my front end and this is very a common common scenario in all the front end application that you as your uh, front end evolves you might need to skip some field you might need to add some field to your back end apis to support your new designs right so even when i am required to add some new fields to my uh, rest api imagine that adding a new field to the rest uh, rest api uh, it would require a changes in the back end as well as in the front end right because you will have to uh, do some map, uh, map, mapping with your database to make sure that that uh, newly added field returns the data whatever is being requested but imagine that same thing if you are doing with the graphql you basically have to just put uh, declare your data in your schema declare that field and uh, inside your query you just need to put that field in uh, while making a request to your graphql backend and response will automatically generate the response based on whatever fields are being requested so graphql make, makes the changes really easy for the developers as well as it makes uh, it it does not really make uh, the front end tightly coupled with your back end front end can request the fields based on whatever data requirement front end has okay so just a quick overview of how uh, like what all things uh, we have in graphql so whatever things are uh, marked in the yellow color are nothing but the ages then you have the scalar fields which are nothing but the field that you actually request by, from your back uh, from your graphql backend and uh, the one that are uh, in the red are nothing but the node type so we'll go deep into the details of how is the query queries form so uh, we are going to build an application called uh, the new story application where we'll have the top stories uh, on uh, rendered on the ui and to get that data we have uh, one mock backend setup where which returns the top stories so imagine that you're writing a query to get a top story now that top story has some title and summary and it also has an image which has the url then it also has a, a, a poster which uh, which is nothing but the person who has posted that story and you, you want to request the name of that person so you also put an uh, put a name field on that actor and the profile picture of that particular actor who has posted that uh, story okay so now let me switch back to another window
okay okay so i'll quickly show how our application is structured so if we so again this is an example for uh, example from the relay official documentation itself so you have a new newsfeed application where you define your uh, components so i have a newsfeed as a parent component which has a story and story declares its own data requirement uh, which which says that it requires a story with the title summary thumbnail and poster okay each of these types are declared in in the typescript and the story is again rendering some some sub components which is poster by line heading and story summary so if i go to poster by line it is basically rendering some image and name i have commented the image for now and if i go back to another component the heading is basically rendering the heading and story summary is uh, rendering the story summary which is basically rendering whatever summary i get from the back end uh, related to that story will get rendered here so i'll just quickly show how this application looks okay so this is how our application looks it has a story title then it has an image and it has a summary right so now if if i go to my application what i see is the starting point of my application is in the index.tsx wherein i have defined the app and app is basically rendering my news feed okay so news feed if i go to my news feed currently uh, what I have done is uh, so since uh, like I mentioned this is uh, we are using relay so we will we are using a relay uh, hooks for getting the data so I'm using a use query loader to get get the news query data so I'm just going into the news feed query so if you go to the news feed query you'll see that I've defined a top story as my query so before that i'll quickly show what is there inside the schema so if you if, if we go to the schema you'll see that if i just copy paste this top story and search for it you see that there's a query defined called top story which returns a story and if i search for a story type you'll see that story is nothing but an object which consists of these fields right so story can have as many fields as it can but currently we only need couple of fields from the schema so what we'll do is we'll just selectively choose the fields that we are uh, we we require to render on the ui so to do that what i have done is uh, first i'll i have used the use query loader and use query loader works uh, works with the typescript so i have provided that use query loader i need to load a data for news feed uh, newsfeed query type and I have provided the query which I want to uh, query from the back end right and this is what, where I have declared that query so now if I go to the newsfeed component newsfeed component is basically so since this use query loader basically loads the data from the uh, from the back end it populates that query with the data and to load to actually load the data I'll have to use the use preloaded query hook uh, so use preloaded query hook takes the query reference again uh, the actual qu uh, qu query and the query reference again the preloaded query reference again now when i use the use preloaded query i'll get the story from uh, so this story it returns the story data from uh, from the back end and that story dot stop story so if you see uh, whatever query i have declared i have declared top story as the root uh, root level field so that's why it uh, the whatever data that i receive will be received inside the top story itself okay so now if you see if you see this code what 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 all things we have done so far is we have used query loader we have used preloaded query and we have also declared a graphql query to render uh, the ui so here you see that the typescript magic TypeScript has automatically generated types for uh, the queries that I have declared. So if you see the newsfeed copy query which I have declared, it has the response type as newsfeed copy query data. 
if i go to the copy query data it defines a type called top story which is nothing but an object which consists of a fragment okay so we'll come to the fragment but if you see that it has automatically generated all the types for uh, for that query whichever i have requested so this is the one of the be benefit that i've uh, really seen while using the relay versus any other library uh, like for example uh, we have also alternate options to manage our application state using redux right so we can al always go with the choice uh, based on our requirement but uh, for graphql clients you have uh, relay as a better choice where you you just need to define your data requirement and relay with with the help of hooks you can easily get that data from the back end and it also provides a typescript support which helps you uh, write less code on your front end and just play around with whatever uh, uh, data that you receive from the back end okay so if i go back to my application and show you so now if i just refresh my application you see that whenever i refresh my application there is a single loading state that is being shown to the user and if i go to the network and if i see that a call to the api you'll see that inside payload i have made a query called news newsfeed copy query and i have requested couple of uh, fields from the story copy fragment and inside preview you see that the data uh, is written for a top story and the data contains only fields which i have requested okay so if i go back to my component if i go back to my component and if i go back to my story fragment which is declared inside my story copy so you see that i have declared title summary created at and poster okay so if i just remove this field from my ui uh, from my query and if i go back and check the response it won't contain that field so this is where a react uh, the graphql really helps you to selectively choose the data uh, data required by your component and it uh, completely decouples the logic of handling uh, uh, the data manipulation on the front end since all of uh, all of the data are declared in a declarative way uh, which is how a react uh, a complete architecture is and uh, since your application is not making multiple requests uh, you see that only newsfeed component is able uh, is responsible for making a single query on behalf of all the children component to get the complete data for your application to run so if i go to uh, if i go to the network again you see that only one network call has been made which has pulled all the data required for for the complete application to render so this is the benefit of working with the relay and uh, uh, since relay is tightly coupled with uh, the react application you will see that it works perfectly fine with your error boundaries and as well as your suspense so the loading state that you are uh, currently seeing in, uh, currently uh, seeing on the ui is nothing but coming through the react suspense wherein i have wrap my newsfeed component inside react suspense and i provided fallback as a loading spinner right so whenever i am trying to make any graphql queries inside uh, any one of the children inside my react suspense it will automatically uh, ensure that unless all those queries are resolved this fallback will be shown okay so imagine that you have a complex component hierarchy below your uh, uh, react suspense which are using uh, the relay graphql queries to query the data from the back end so you do not have to manually handle all of those query uh, loading state by yourself okay so if you can imagine a complex application like facebook or linkedin imagine that if you have to manage a loading state at a page level by yourself you will have to keep track of all the requests going to the back end and also keep track of updating the loading state of each of those requests and once all of those requests are completed then only you need to show the data on uh, the complete ui application to the user so this complexity com uh, you can easily go away with that complexity using just uh, just by putting the react suspense and using the relay queries for your react application okay 
so again going back to my slide so right now we just saw that how uh, how is our uh, react application is making a single query to get all the data so we also saw a concept called fragment wherein each component in our case uh, the story component is basically declaring its own data need through the fragments so i have declared a newsfeed query which defines a query on top story node and it defines a story fragment so that story fragment is nothing but a fragment which defines a story it also defines an actor image and thumbnail and finally whenever you run your uh, react relay application the relay compiler transforms this all of this queries and fragments and generates a single query which is called a compiled query and it it automatically identifies that what all fields are required for this page or for this particular entry point to work so you see that whatever newsfeed query uh, is given to the compiler it uh, compile that query into a single query and identified uh, all the edges and the nodes in your query so now if you if if i uh, if i move down further i can also add fragments at multiple levels right so if i go back to my story component if i go back to my story component you see that i have again a poster which define which again defining some fragments which are required uh, which are the data required by my sub component so you see that poster by line is a component which require the poster details which are coming as a fragment from this parent level component okay so parent level component only declares the fragment in the query and the children level component will actually use those fragments to get that actual data okay so poster by line component is actually using the use fragment hook and declaring the fragment and uh, passing the fragment reference to this use fragment hook and getting the data so whatever data uh, even though whenever we are saying that only top uh, top level component is able responsible for fetching the data but you see that only the component which has declared uh, the uh, the request or basically requested a data only that component has access to that data so for example if i try to access some data yeah, inside apologies for apologies apologies for disturbing you in between but yeah we are you know we are short on time so yeah we are like just a just a quick heads up that your time is basically up but yeah you know in case you can just want to wrap up you can just definitely take two minutes and then we can wrap up thank you sure 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 i'll just quickly cover a couple of points okay so uh, one of the things that uh, uh, that is the most interesting thing that we have learned uh, while using the react relay is using the preloaded queries versus lazy load queries so this diagram i think uh, justifies the correct usage of why preloaded queries are uh, preferred over the lazy load queries so if you see that as soon as um, whenever i am using use uh, lazy load queries you see that whenever the uh, render and paint starts uh, the network request to get that data starts and then the uh, the response is processed and then finally your renders and print happens but using whenever you try to use the use preloaded query as soon as your component code is downloaded uh, along with that your query data and request is also started and uh, along with that you will process uh, the response is also processed and uh, since all of this is happening together you will definitely get to uh, get the better performance as you are not doing anything sequentially here you are doing parallelly you are uh, also loading your component code as well as you are making a request to uh, get the data for your component okay so since all of this is done together you will definitely going to get a better performance whenever you are using preloaded query over lazy load query yeah so i think with that i would like to uh, uh, take a moment to thank you everyone uh, for giving me a chance to uh, basically uh, talk about uh, my experience while working with the react relay